everyone, my name is Christy. Welcome to my corner. Thank you for joining me today on this Floss Tube Friday for Floss Tube number 48. And um, I feel like I have a lot to talk about today. I have a whole pile of works in progress, things that I worked on. I have a dog who's shaking in the hallway <laughs> and jingling. I have a fully finished object that is um, not, well, you'll see it. Well, if you're on Instagram, you've already seen it. I have um, a fun haul and I have a lot of fun plans and I have a book update and then I have a wedding update. So I'm getting married in two months. I wasn't planning on talking about the wedding or pl the wedding plans and stuff, but I have gotten so many questions about wedding plans. So I thought I would do a little like wedding planning update at the very end. So if you're not interested in that, you can skip it. But I just thought that those of you who are interested in how things are going, they are going, there have been a lot of planning happening, are, you can, you know, see what's going on at the end. So that's that. But before we get to all that stuff, which I feel like is really exciting, uh, welcome to um, all my new subscribers. Thank you for joining me on my artistic and crafty adventures. And welcome back to everyone who has been hanging out with me for however long you have been with me. It has been really fantastic to get to know you in the comments here on YouTube and also on Instagram. And if you're not following me on Instagram, you can find me at Dr. Underscore Christie. I'll put that right here. And that is where I post pictures of, you know, daily progress on my stitching, other crafts I'm doing, baking, walks around town. I did a kind of a whole series of different textures in my town, like pictures of textures that I took this week, which by the way, Instagram thought was like sponsored because I, 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 a la uh, Sesame Street. I'm like, you know, this, this post is brought to you by the number three, right? I said, this post is brought to you by textures. And Instagram thought that it was sponsored by textures. Like textures was paying me <laughs> to post pictures of textures. Anyway, if you're interested in seeing what I'm doing during the week, then you can find me at Dr. Underscore Christy. And this is a channel about embroidery and cross stitch and other textile crafts. Uh, you'll see two different textile crafts this week and uh, baking and history and the history of all of those things. So if any of that is interesting to you and you would like to hang out, uh, I'd love for you to subscribe and stick around. So I think I'm going to do like all my life update stuff at the end. That way, if folks just want to see what I'm up to, then you know, my stitching and stuff, you can do that at the beginning. And I think this is going to be long. So it's probably going to be only lightly edited because I don't have a ton of time and I'm running late. Let's start with my FFO fully finished object. Last week you saw my fox, my needle felted fox, right? And this is for the Crafty Toads uh, summer camp, summer camp is what it's called, Crafty Toes Summer Camp. And basically for the month of June, which goes from June 15th to July 15th, I think they started late, you just needed to make two stuffies. And they are a yarn dyeing company and they also sell fabric and they sell bags and stuff like that. So there I think we're expecting either stuffed animals like sewn stuffed animals or knitted or crocheted stuffed animals. But I don't do that. <laughs> and I had these little kits. Sorry about the noise. We just got new roads today. So our roads are nice and smooth. It's the weirdest thing, but now everyone's kind of driving up and down our roads. So, um, anyway, back to stuffies. So the, the, the challenge is to make two stuffies, which are like stuffed animals in a craft. And so I had two needle felted animal kits and so I made them. So the first one was the fox, which you all saw last week. There he is, adorable. His ears are too big, his body's too small. That's a that's a theme you will see. The one for this week is a turkey. <laughs> anyone has ever seen. It's a turkey. So I think my problem, other than apparently I am terrible <laughs> at needle felting, is that I actually think that I'm too aggressive. I think that, so I made, you start with this brown color 
and you make it into like a pom-pom and then you it says to like stab it in the middle and what i ended up doing was i ended up making it into a pretty solid ball i mean this is like you know those dryer balls that you get this is like dryer ball you know felted and i think what i should have done was just kind of stab it in the middle to make sure that all of the pieces, like all of the different fibers would stay together, but then leave the outside more fluffy. And then it would have been flatter and bigger, and then his weird head wouldn't be so weird, and his weird butt also wouldn't be so weird. My dog just jumped up on the bed. It's gonna be that kind of video. <laughs> but he's done. This is my FFO needle felted turkey. Gobble, gobble, my friends. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> but they both work. They fit. They work for the challenge. So that's really all that matters. And I got to have fun. You know, I, um, I've had those for a while. That one I got, I mean, probably Christmas before Christmas because, uh, I, I needed, oh, I got it from Woolery.com. I'll put a link down below to Woolery.com. I haven't talked about them in a while, but I got it from Woolery.com and it was like $7 and it put me over the free shipping threshold. And so I made that back <laughs> free shipping. And then I think the Fox was on clearance at Michael's. So, you know, totally worth it. So let's talk. Sorry, I have to fix my little nose ring there. Let's talk. Whoops. Works in progress. I have a bunch of, I have different styles, a bunch of different styles. So let's start with the one that's on top, which is what I was working on today. And that is my Jacobean Cruel Work class from the Royal School of Needlework. And my fiance got this for me for my birthday. And it's essentially an entire class with the kit um, in some, in wool and Appleton wool. And I'm really enjoying it. So I did two more sessions today and I will show them to you. So today what I did was I filled in the inside of the leaf using long and short stitches, and then I outlined the leaf in a stem stitch. So it was really good. Um, I actually learned a new technique with the, sorry, my dog is like snorting and rolling, being crazy on the bed <laughs> right there. I learned a new technique with the stem stitch that uh, of how to like turn a corner easier than I was doing before. So that was really, really helpful. And this is being stitched on a, uh, upholstery weight linen twill. It, uh, it came with the kit and it's being uh, stitched with Appleton wool. Um, and I'll show you. So these, there's going to be a, it's all going to fall off. These are the Appleton wools. And there are different places to buy these wools um, in the United States. They're readily available in the UK, but they're a little harder to find in the United States, but there are some places that sell them in the United States. I worked on that today. And the next thing I want to show you is my medieval bear. And this is from a medieval manuscript at the British library, I believe. And it's going to look like this. And it's basically just a kind of scruffy bear and some bee skeps and some bees, some giant, giant angry bees. And I have been working on the bear. So I had already finished, I think the table and the bee skeps last time I saw you, although I did add a little texture into the inside of the bee skeps. So that makes me much happier now that there's a little bit of texture in there. But what I really worked on is the bear and it was overwhelmingly decided that the bear should be in French knots and so that's what I've done I've made him in French knots and it's that the sort of the change in color right here is much more obvious on camera than it is in person it actually blends it blends much nicer in person and then I did a little bit of the outline because I'm afraid that I'm lo gonna lose the outline with all of these um, knots right there, but maybe not. My dog's leaving now. Sorry. So that's my, my next whip is my bees and bear embroidery. And this is being stitched on 
two different kinds of fabric because if you look at the picture, the top is red and the bottom is like tan. And I didn't want to stitch all that. So I decided just to do a red fabric on top and a, which is a red Kona cotton and a kind of off white fabric on the bottom, which is an off white linen. I think it's called Krista is the color from, uh, fabricsstore.com. And then the back to kind of keep them together is a, just a cotton muslin that I got from my stash. I have thread on me. <laughs> There's just thread everywhere. There's thread all over. <laughs> like, like I find embroidery floss. I'm assuming this happens to all stitchers, right? You just find embroidery floss like everywhere, like all over, all over the house. You find little pieces in your clothes. You find them in little piles, you know, I don't know about you, but I find them everywhere anyway. <laughs> but this is my bear and bees. Oh, and this is my little needle minder that I made. Um, I have more of them if anybody wants them. If you, if you're interested in a, uh, in a shark fin needle minder, let me know and I'll, I'll hook you up. And this is in, sorry. And I keep it in a bag that I got from Stitcher Trish who is, has an Etsy shop called Forever Us Needlecraft. And they were having a sale. I don't know if they're still having a sale, but Tony, the stubborn stitcher mentioned them. Uh, she got some of their stuff. I, she mentioned them in her last video. I think I'm super behind on floss tube. So it might've been two videos ago, but definitely she's mentioned them um, that she got it on sale. But this was a gift. It was a very sweet gift. Um, like almost a year ago, a long time ago. So that was my second my second whip. My third whip, I keep in a plastic bag because I don't apparently know how to sew anymore and cannot make my own project bags. God, who has time? But this is a cross stitch pattern from the June 2021 Just Cross Stitch magazine that I got as a prize, a giveaway from Mrs. Flossie. And I decided that I wanted to try a full coverage piece. And so I decided to try this full coverage piece. And this is called Wildflowers with a View. It is designed by Kristen Stoltzfus Clay. And like I said, it's in the June 2021 Just Cross Stitch magazine. So I thought I'd give that a try. And I'm starting, I start at the top right. So I'm starting over here. So it's like a lot of basically white colors. I mean, there are four colors that I've used, but they all kind of look the same. I am stitching this on a 16 count white Ada that I just got from a, like a tube. I'm stitching it two over one. And I'm stitching it in partly the called for colors and partly colors I had in my stash that don't blend so well, but I'm hoping will turn out okay in the end because um, I didn't feel like I just wanted to start it. So I just decided to start it, but this is where I am. And if I can find a picture of where I was before, I'll put it right here. These two light colors are actually the called for colors and these two other colors are not called for. So this kind of is not blending really nicely. I don't know. This is really just an experiment to see if I can do a full coverage. And I'm going to be honest, I don't love it. I don't love it. But I'm not sure if I don't love it because I'm just basically stitching lots of white. I'm not sure if I don't love it because it's my first actual cross stitch that I'm not doing on Pattern Keeper because I'm doing it on paper. I'm not sure if I don't love it because it's full coverage. Like, I'm just not sure why I'm not loving it. I, I do kind of think that a lot of it is the fact that it's on paper. It's just kind of very awkward. I don't have, I don't have like the accoutrement to deal with a, like a paper pattern. I, I'm not using, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, not going to show much of the pattern, but I am going to show you kind of what I'm doing so you can understand maybe why I'm feeling a little frustrated not even frustrated, just like not loving it. So basically I just have a pen and I'm just crossing it out as I go. So 
I don't even have like a highlighter by me. I don't own a highlighter. <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of stick it like, um, magnet. He's a magnet. He's one of my needle miners to stick it to like the table in front of me. And I cross it off when I go past line. Anyway, I feel like if this were in pattern keeper, it would be super, it would be much easier. And I find it much more pleasant. I am, like I said, I'm not doing it in all the called for colors, but I am, I, I did. Oh yeah. Not, but I am, I'm not doing it all the called for colors. I did grid it, uh, every five squares and I, I am not miscounting, which is kind of nice. So my counting is pretty good. The five by five squares is a sweet spot for me. I'm, I'm pr it's pretty clear. And I did grid the paper copy five by five also. So it's actually really easy to find. I think it helps that it's uh, blocks of color. Uh, there's like a little bit of confetti, but I mean, not even confetti. There's a little bit of like where I'm skipping some stitches to help with the blending that's happening here, but it's not like confetti. So there's like, yeah. So that I like, I like that I can just kind of go through and I'm not, I'm not messing up my counting. So that's good. I mean, that's good to know. I'm, I'm learning a lot about myself and my stitching from this piece, which is kind of exciting. And I'm going to finish it. I'm determined to finish it. I at least shoot. I got to get to the land I mean, <laughs> or the ocean. I just, I'm just like stuck in the sky. I do understand now why those of you who do these full coverages and like, are like, Oh my God, I can't do the sky anymore. I'm kind of feeling like I just want to like zip down to the, to the land, but I'm afraid that I won't, that I'll miscount. So I probably won't do that. But that's my, my full coverage. I did work on my temperature library with my mom on Monday because she forgot about Sunday mom. Um, she, I texted her 10 minutes before. I'm just like, just making sure we're meeting. No response for hours. <laughs> no, it's fine. So we met up on Monday. Um, so we did it on Monday and basically what I did was I finished June. I did not start on July, even though that puts me a little bit behind, but then I started working on the shelves, like filling in the, the actual shelving unit as I would call it. So that's essentially what I did. I finished up the month and then I finished up June and then did some, did some Brown, but we're coming along. We're trucking along. I'm pretty excited. And this is stitched, uh, all the information about this is down below. Um, this is a, the temperature library pattern that I designed for me and my mom. And then I made public for other people. And then other people wanted to stitch it in cross stitch. So I made a cross stitch version. So the embroidered version will look like this at the end. And the cross stitch version will look like this at the end. And you can find them both in my Etsy shop, which is linked down below. And I'm stitching this on a bleached linen yardage from fabricstore.com in the called for DMC that are on the table in the pattern. So that's what I'm doing with that. As called for as you can be in a temperature pattern. And I, and it's in my, my books bag, which is like the last bag I made. I don't know. Angie, do you still watch my, <laughs> when did I give you a book? I gave Angie one too. The dog sitcher. I gave her one. Uh, months ago. So I need to start making more, <laughs> I need to make more bags because I'm keeping things. I have two projects in plastic bags now. Ridiculous. My final whip of the week, I had mentioned last week and it was kind of like that I had this sort of secret project idea that I wanted to do. And I was hoping that I would be further in it so I could show you like a finished product, but I'm not. And I posted like a sneak peek on Instagram and I figured I would just show you and tell you my plan because I'm kind of excited about it and I do think that it will work. So this is what it looks like. And these are, well, it's called stump work and these are flower petals. And stump work is a type of 
3D embroidery that uses wires and you basically stitch around the wires and then you can cut this out and you have like a flower petal. And I'm stitching these, so this is on a, I'm assuming it's a polyester chiffon because it melts, I've already tested it. And that's good because I wanna melt the outside so that it doesn't fray. And I'm stitching it in these really, really fine silks from DeVere Yarns. And these are silks that my mom gave me because they're really thin, but these are made for silk shading. So you can see how blended those are and how shiny they are. So my plan is, let me put these down back in the bag. My plan is to cut out these individual petals and I'm expecting to use seven per flower. I have these turquoise beads. So I'm going to, and they have a hole on the side. So I'm going to take this wire, not this exact wire, but like this wire, I have a whole spool of this wire and put it through horizontally and then twist it at the bottom so that this kind of sits up like this, so it's like horizontal, and this will be the middle of the flower. So there'll be like little, like little petals all around, and this is the middle of the flower. That's the plan. Oh, and these are for my wedding. So I want to make three, I want three silk shaded stump work embroidery flowers that I made myself for my wedding. That was my secret project. And I hope it works. If it doesn't work, I have a plan B and it's fine. But I just think that I happen to have all of this stuff. And I wanted to make something for my wedding. Like at first I was thinking I wanted to do some embroidery on my dress, but then I decided I was getting married really quickly and so that I just don't have time to do that. But I think, I don't know, I think it'll be beautiful. If it works, it'll be beautiful. If it doesn't work, I'll get other flowers and it'll be fine. So that was my like secret project that's not a secret anymore. Sorry, car's going by. There you go. That, my friends. Oh, and I'm housing this in a plastic bag. So that is all of my, that's all my stitching, I think. That's all my stitching. I'm just looking around and yeah, I don't think I have any other stitching to show you today, but I feel like that's a good bit of stitching and, um, you know, we're, we've been talking about stitching for a while, so that's exciting. I do have some, uh, I'll talk a little bit about haul. I have some haul. These actually I got, some of this I got in last week and I totally forgot to tell you last week because I was in a hurry for some reason. I don't know. I'm always, I always feel like I'm in a hurry. I always feel like I'm doing this late, but I was like sitting around not working, not doing this. So it's my own fault, but I got both my Bee Stitch Me Silks of the Month and my Color and Cotton Silks of the Month. So let's do my Bee Stitch Me Silks of the Month first since I have them and they're browns and neutrals, which is really nice. So here they all are together. And we have espresso, which is a nice deep brown. Java Hut. Ooh, that's nice. That's a variegated. That's the only variegated, which is nice. Mocha. Or in the UK, mocha. I was watching when I watch uh, the Great British Baking Show and they do um, mocha teens but Sue calls them mocha teens. And I'm like, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> it took me a long time to realize she was saying mocha. And light roast. And finally, cold foam. 
that's a beautiful light. It, it's looking, no, that's about it. Yep. It's a pretty light one. Oops. <laughs> there we go. Ah, this is going to be awkward because I'm not cutting a lot of this out. <laughs> I don't have the energy to do some editing. So those were my Be Stitch Me Silks of the Month. I did pay for next month, but then I put it on pause because like all this, all this here, not these right here, but all this here is all silks that I've never used. So I need to start using those silks before I can buy new silks. I just can't get any more silks. So that, um, I'm sad because I love getting them, but I gotta pay for a wedding. And then the color and cotton cottons are a, uh, I'm feeling, I don't know, red, white, and blue happening here. These, I, I kind of like these cause they're not super variegated, which is nice. Um, but we have dusty rose, amaryllis, woolen, again is a nice white um, admiral blue and brass band so there you go and that's them all together nice so those were my those are the ones I got last week that I forgot to show you but those are my um, clubs. I'm still doing the color and cotton club because I use cotton more often. And so having more cotton makes sense for how I stitch, but I also got some other fun things I got. And this kind of goes into wedding plans, but it's also craftiness. So I thought I would show it in this section rather than my wedding section. One of the ways that I want to decorate is with pom poms. I love pom poms. And so I have all sorts of different sized pom-pom makers and you make pom-poms with all sorts of things, embroidery floss, yarn, fabric scraps, ribbon, and sorry, yarn, ribbon, recycled saris. So with that in mind, I bought some recycled sorry yarn. So I got it in teal. Um, and that's showing a little bluer. It's actually a little bit greener than the, than what it's showing up for you. And then I just got it in like a natural, like off white. So I got, now I have fuzzes, fuzzes on me. I got three of each and I'm going to make pom poms out of it. I also got some, uh, bow wire, like gold bow wire. This was on clearance and I thought this would be good for things like, uh, I, I want to make pom-pom garlands, but I also want to make kind of pom-pom bouquets and my nieces are going, well, I haven't talked to my brother yet, but I'm going to see if, if my nieces want to be my flower girls. And if so, they will have pom-pom bouquets. So I have kind of, like I said, all different sized pom-pom makers and they would have a pom-pom bouquet that they could then take with them. And so this would be good for that. I also have kind of gold sparkly uh, floral tape, which to wrap around it and make it nice and make it pretty. And I have lots of ribbon. I, and this is just new ribbon that I got, but I have like tons of ribbon. So that's the rest of what I purchased. Um, I bought some other things that were not stitchy related. If you looked on Instagram, if you <laughs> saw Instagram yesterday in my stories, I posted one of my purchases, which is the entire series of murder. She wrote because <laughs> I love me some Jessica Fletcher. And, um, yeah, I think that that's, that's everything. I think that's everything, uh, stitchy related. So that's my stitchy related content. If you're not interested in seeing anything about the book or the wedding, it's been lovely spending time with you. And if you want to talk about the book, then we're going to get into that. I've made some really good progress on that front. I'll get it out. This is my dissertation. This is tabs all the way through my dissertation. So I have made it through my dissertation. 
Um, I've marked them all. They're color coded. I think I talked about this last week, how color coded they are. And I, here, we'll get it so you can see what it says. And I, um, I did, my goal for this week was to finish this and, um, read like a chapter a day and maybe do some reorganizing. I did not get any reorganizing done. I did finish this and I read half of a book. So I've been working on, oh, but back, my, back to my dissertation. I, I'm really pleased with the information that I have in there and how I can reorganize it for how I want my book organized. So I'm very happy about that. And then I've been reading, I got my little in the library loan and I've been reading, uh, this is James Brundage, who is, um, amazing and it's medieval canon law. And essentially I wanted to start with a kind of general discussion of just kind of a refresher. I haven't looked at basically I've done very little research in the past five years. Nah, not really. Cause I have done, I have written a couple articles, but I haven't really honed up on my literature. <laughs> I'll just say that like my secondary literature. So this is basically giving me kind of a crash course in how the court system worked again, just as a refresher course. And there are some really great things in here. Um, James Brundage is a genius and he writes a lot of stuff on, uh, he's a canon law expert. Uh, so which canon law is church law. Oh, I'm sorry. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm writing a book. I'm a medieval history professor. I'm writing a book about um, women and the court system in the Middle Ages. And if you are, uh, if you want to learn more about that, I made a video that I think I put up here and it will tell you like about the book, uh, what my topic is, uh, some background information on the book and also why I'm talking about it in my floss tube. I'm sorry. I should have mentioned that like 10 minutes ago. I apologize. Back to Brundage. I'm at the point now I'm skipping around because I don't need to read all this, but, uh, I'm, I'm into chapter six now, which is, um, canonical courts and procedure, because that's one of my weaknesses is that I'm not super confident in my knowledge of court procedure, which is kind of important in what I'm writing. So this will be really helpful for that. But Brundage is really fun. He has a good sense of humor. Brundage's books are very fun. Um, this one is kind of dry. This isn't one that you'd want to read just for funsies, but like my favorite, my, one of my all time favorite history books is this book, James Brundage, Law, Sex and Christian Society in Medieval Europe. And basically it's looking at the connection between Christian identity and, um, the evolution of marriage and marriage law in medieval Europe. And it's amazing. Um, and it is. I mean, it's like if you are a medieval historian who studies like sex or marriage or uh, canon law, um, this is like the Bible, but it often goes viral because, and I have this marked off and I don't even know how long this tab here, this white tab here has probably been there for eight years because I always keep this page tagged. This is on page 162 and it is a flow chart of when medieval people were allowed to have sex. <laughs> and it is seriously the funniest thing. And so this has gone viral multiple times on the internet because it's just hilarious. And it talks about like the different rules about whether you're married, is she pregnant? Is it a holiday? Is it a, is it Lent? Is it like a, like, like Sunday, right? Is, like what day of the week is? Anyway, th this is like all of the, there are these books called penitentials, which is basically what priests used as like guidebooks for when they were hearing confession. And so you would hear confession and then you would have, you know, you would have studied these, these guide, these penitentials. And so you would know kind of what penance to give out and you would know the rules and like what things required penance and like what didn't. 
So this is looking at pen penitentials. It's not actually what people did, but it's looking at penitentials and it's hilarious. I might scan it and put it and, and put a link to it down below if anybody wants to see it. Or I probably have it already scanned or I can probably find it on the internet. So that's what I've been working on. Not this, but um, the Canon Law book and I got through my dissertation and I'm pretty pleased with that. So that's where I am this week on my, my book project. So there you go. If you have any questions, let me know. My plans for this week is to finish the Canon Law book and I do want to start reorganizing things a little bit in kind of like new files just so I can get the actual writing going. And then I want to um, read another one of the books. I want to read Unmarriages. This is by Ruth Mazo Karras, and she is a professor at, um, she's in Dublin. And this is essentially, it's called um, Women, Men, and Sexual Unions in the Middle Ages. And it's looking at irregular marriages, evidence from irregular marriages. But the sources that she uses are the same court that I work on. Those court cases that I look at, she looks at cases in the same court only like 150 years later. So I really like, well, I mean, she's, she's also a genius. Um, and I really like her work because it, uh, it shows me how to interpret these sources in a way that, um, a brilliant, scholar would I don't know so this is kind of my next read is Unmarriages by Ruth Mazokaris that's for next week oh and I'm leaving town on Friday so I'm leaving town on Friday to go to the Northeast to visit my family um rich you know rich will still be here but I'm going kind of doing some reconnaissance and seeing my family and so I will be posting I, I'm going to try and record on Thursday and have it post on Friday but my time will be shorter, essentially. So I won't get as much done. Yeah, I probably won't get as much done. But that's uh, that's okay. Oh, I did talk about stitching plans. <laughs> Sorry, people who wanted to hear about my stitching plans. Stitching plans. Um, I want to work on all my whips. I want to definitely get some progress done on... Well, I probably won't work on my cruel work this week. But I do want to work on my other whips. I... Do you plan on posting a video on Tuesday? And I was kind of thinking, I was kind of thinking about what kind of video I wanted to post on Tuesday. And then I realized that I've been wanting to, for ages, do a flip through of this book with you. This is a, it's called The Key to Needlepoint and Cruel Embroidery by Dorothy Sarah. It's a complete guide, including materials, and designs, stitches, and motifs. This was a gift from my stepmother. She, when I first started embroidering, she sent me a box of like just embroidery floss that she had and this book. And I think it was published in 1967. Let me see. Yeah, 1967. And I want to do a flip through because I love flip throughs. I love watching people flip through magazines. I love watching people flip through the books that they get. I love, a, I love a flip through. So I'm going to do a flip through of this wacky book. It's hilarious. Be ready for that for, for Tuesday. And I'm not going to go through every page, obviously, but I'm going to sort of go through the, I'm going to go through the helpful sections because there are actually some really helpful sections of this. And then I'm going to go through like the wackadoodle sections. <laughs> Cause there's so much fun. So that's, that's my Tuesday book. I mean, Tuesday video. It's going through this book. All right. Wedding planning. So apparently weddings, number one, have a lot of moving parts and number two are way more expensive than you expect them to be. Now I'm super lucky because I am, well, first of all, I'm pretty low maintenance, right? So I don't, I'm not worried about all, all this stuff. I'm not having a bachelorette party. I'm not having a wedding shower. Um, my sister did actually surprise me. Well, it didn't surprise me, but decided that she wanted to do something for me, which was like incredibly unexpected and sweet. I mean, it was like the nicest, I don't know. I had all the feels. I cried a little bit. I have to be honest with you. 
but she planned a whole like day for when I'm visiting at the, you know, at the end of July, we're going to get like massages and have lunch and do like a painting and wine thing. I mean, it's like the perfect thing for me with just my family, which is nice. Like my mom, my stepmom, my aunt, my cousin, my sister-in-law and my sister. I mean, isn't that like, I don't know. It's just like so thoughtful and I'm, I'm getting weepy just, I mean, it's just so thoughtful, like so thoughtful because I don't want a party. Like I don't want woo, you know, I'm not a woo kind of a person anymore. So that, okay. So that's happening. But other than that, like we're not really do, I, I don't, we're not doing that. So we're having the wedding at my grandparents farm in central Pennsylvania. Those of you who watch my mom's podcast or my mom's vlog, have seen um, video there whenever she goes up she videos there but if I can find a picture I'll put a picture here of like the gazebo area and that's like where the tent is gonna be I think I have a picture but I'll, I'll put it there and so I contacted well so I organized the food last week or earlier earlier in the week and we're going to have a Brazilian food truck come which will be awesome. I ordered my ring, which came, I'll show you my ring. I ordered my dress, but I think I'm going to return it and get a different size. I talked to, I'm having a conversation with the photographer tomorrow. I talked to the tent people today because we're going to have a, t like the rent tent rental people. So that's going to be organized hopefully next week. The officiant is my really good friend who, um, we'll do the officiating and I'm going to do invitations this weekend and send them out next week. I do want to get some porta potties since it's going to be outside. I don't want like people running through the house. So I'll get some porta potties, but I think that's kind of it. I have to like, yeah. So that's like the next, the last thing I have to organize. And then I have to get like, um, we're going to do beer and wine, but I can just pick that up when I'm there when I'm in pencil, I mean, I'm just going to get beer and wine. I'm not going to like have it, you know, I'm not going to have like a bar. I'm just going to have beer and wine. Basically everyone who would want to drink alcohol is of age because we only have like little, little kids or adults of legal age in my family. There's no like 15 year olds, right. In my family. So anyway, so that's essentially where we are, but I did yesterday. So the, the FedEx comes and knocks on the door and is like, you have to sign for this. And I have this big box and I'm like, what is this big box? It's a big box. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the ring. So for some reason, <laughs> maybe, well, the thing I've noticed is that everything about weddings has to be like an, an event. And I think that this is and I mean this is heavy this is a heavy box like I feel like there's more stuff in here <laughs> but there's not I don't think I mean there's like a drawer with like paperwork but that's it anyway it's a very heavy box but I have a ring so I'll show you my ring so that's my ring it has little like pyramids and little like diamonds and it's white white gold so that's my that's the ring I got and I really like it I'm really pleased with it. And it fits me. I tried it on. I'm not going to try it on for you because it's not time yet. And it <laughs> goes in this giant box. I feel like there is something else in here. It's just a really, it's just a really solid box, but it has a drawer with like paperwork and a cleaning cloth. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it was, I was very surprised when this big box came. Um, I'm not showing my dress because, um, Rich doesn't want to see it and he's old fashioned. He's, he's very sweet. He's sweet. He's my Southern belle. He's sweet and old fashioned. Doesn't want to see the dress. So I'm not going to show it on here just in case he, um, you know, he subs, he subscribes. He doesn't always watch me, but he subscribes. And I would hate for like when, you know, when it moves on YouTube, I would hate for that to be ruin the surprise. So, um, I'm not going to show that, but we'll, I'll show pictures at the end and it'll be fun. And that's, I mean, that's my wedding planning at the moment. That's all that, that's all, that's what we got. That's what we got right now. 
So that's, I think, everything for today. I don't have anything else to talk about. Um, I have been talking for like 50 minutes, which is my longest recorded video. I will edit some of it out, so it won't be quite 50 minutes, but I feel like this is going to be a long one. So I'm going to go get it um, edited and uploaded, and I will see you all on Tuesday for that fun, old-timey, old-timey, 60s, not so old-timey, but that fun 60s uh, uh, stitching book, which makes me laugh. So... I don't know how to end this now. I'm feeling very awkward now. So that's it for me. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you on Tuesday. And with all that being said, please take good care of yourselves and have a good one. Bye.